Welcome back. All right, so the New York Islanders may have got a steal in the draft, or they may have picked a player who is the latest in a long line of players that were really, really hyped up going into their draft year and then ended up being drafted much later. It does happen. Not all players take that same next step, right? So you look at them when they're 15, when they're 16, and you go, okay, progression is there. Lots of progression. Can't wait to see what he can do. This is going to be a great player. And then their draft year, it stalls. It stalls out. And so no matter how talented a player might be, if they don't take that next step and players around them do in that draft class, they're going to fall. Now, he ends up being drafted. 52nd overall is the official number that he's drafted at. Pretty sure it was 51st because number 11 doesn't happen. But he's drafted by the Islanders. And the Islanders are a team that can absolutely take on a player who's a project. They are a franchise that... Uh, final four, two years in a row, they can afford to take a project. And if they hit on this project, they could look brilliant, right? There are still some things to like with Ratu's game. However, however, the scouts really soured on him this year. So we'll go through some notes that I saw from scouts. Uh, Hockey Prospects Annual really gets into this. His skating is average and he can't score was one comment that I wanted to isolate on. Another one, this, is, this isn't a first-round player, and that was not an unpopular idea that maybe he shouldn't go in the first round. The, the damning part of that is this was seen as a weak draft to start with. So you're looking at a player who was supposed to be the best of what was considered an, an average to below average class, and now he's fallen below a lot of players. And this was the most damning of the reports I saw. He's not a goal scorer, not a playmaker. He's a bad skater. So... That's a problem. And his skating mechanics have been talked about all the way through. The idea was his skating mechanics aren't great. His top end speed may not be fantastic, but boy, he has the hands, he has the creativity, and he's going to be a big player. He's going to be a big center in the NHL. So he's got star written all over him. The skating mechanics are one thing, but while that's a detractor, it shouldn't hurt his overall stock. Well, when everything else starts to fall apart, it does. Playing in Liga this year, 35 games, three goals, three assists for six points. And I talked about this in a video I did before the draft that Ratu had fallen. Now, I thought he was going to get taken. I was I have picked it, I think, 21st by Minnesota. Of course, they traded that draft pick, so that would have been Edmonton's draft pick at 21st. Uh, Minnesota instead decides to go with a goaltender at 19th, and Ratu just keeps falling. Now, at the under-20s, in eight games, he had three goals, four assists, seven points. But what people point to is, in Liga it kind of falls apart. And what made it look worse was that last season, 2019-2020, he had four points in 12 games in Liga. So all the numbers where you want to see a guy progressing, for Ratu, it looked like he was regressing, that there, he was having more and more problems as it went along. So the positives, and there are positives with this game, he does have an NHL caliber shot. Any of the reports I looked at, the shot is there. But... Is that going to be enough to get him into the NHL and keep him there? That's where there's a problem. Now, he has net crashes on zone entries. He crashes the net all the time. He is big on going straight to the net. Big body, strong player. But when that's your go-to move, the defense will anticipate it. And so he's having to change his game. And in the meantime, you have some scouts watching him and saying, okay, so he's driving to the net all the time. He's not looking around the ice. He's not looking at how to utilize his teammates, so it's easier for him to get to the net, and there's a greater chance to score by spreading out that defense. The other team knows. He gets the puck, he's going straight to the net. All right, we don't have to worry about his line mates as much. So this is where the not a goal scorer, not a playmaker quote comes in, where he's not passing the puck enough, right? And the six points in 35 games tells you there's an issue there, right? So the tunnel vision's a problem because he does get caught trying to go through everyone you know that frustration you have watching a hockey game it happens in football too where it's like oh what do you oh you're going into like eight guys well that's that's not gonna work um and soccer soccer too where you'll see a guy going in and yeah you i don't know what you're thinking you should probably pass that back or figure something out but okay uh because then it kind of becomes a wasted play right you end up turning it over and it's going the other way and i mean that with any of those sports where it can be turned over and end up going the other way. Uh, but yeah, so he does get caught. Now, here's the upside again. Here's the reason why the Islanders probably look at this at 52 and say, you know what, we'll give him a shot. We'll take a flyer on him. Because 
his defense improved. Now what we're looking at is a forward that uh, there was one report I saw that said now they kind of like his game better away from the puck than with the puck, which is different from how he was scouted two years ago from when it was he's going to be the number one player. He was supposed to be really good for defense and offense. The offense was supposed to overshadow the defense. Now it might be the defense that overshadows the offense. So you transition him to center at the NHL level. Maybe he ends up being a third liner or maybe ends up being a fourth line center, right? Uh, his game is changing, and this is something that some scouts talked about, and I think it depends when you saw him during the season, where he is starting to find ways to change his game and adapt, and that's something you look for in a prospect. Is he adapting his game at the higher level? Is he doing his best to improve? Because there are prospects who come up through through the, the, the minor league system uh, or you know juniors, university, and I think in some cases they feel like, okay, my skill got me here. I know what I'm doing. And so they may not be as coachable or they might be resistant to any kind of changes. Like, no, no, I don't need to do that now here because at, at that lower level, this worked. So this will work. I just need to keep doing it. And so it can be frustrating for, for coaches. It can be frustrating for scouts uh, and, and for the player ideally as well, because if it, if it doesn't work, if all of these pressures that he's trying to put on himself and I can do this, I can do this, if it doesn't work. He's getting frustrated too, right? So there are some question marks. There are some question marks according to what I've been reading when it comes to Ratu. Can his puck handling overcome the poor skating? So this is this is an honest question here. And this is why maybe his game suits the bottom six more than the top six. Maybe it suits having him as a shutdown player. The Islanders may very well, as soon as he's in training camp, say, all right, we're going to work on your defense. We're going to work on all that. We're not convinced the offensive game's ever going to be, you know, top six worthy, but we think we can get a good third line, third or fourth line center out of this guy, right? So you start working on the defense, but you also need to start working on that that skating a little bit too, because again, we see players who are very good scorers that get stuck in the AHL, and sometimes it's the skating's mediocre, right? Or guys got really good hands, but again, the skating can can really knock that down. So the puck handling is still there. I didn't see anything saying necessarily his puck handling is a problem. Yes, he does net crash a little bit much, and maybe that'll cause some turnovers. But again, with the right coaching, and the Islanders are very good at coaching players to play better defensively, that could help. Uh, and will the offense trend up? Because this is a question mark too. And one quote I saw that I thought was interesting was, not all prospects have a linear... Um, experience when it comes to their development. Not all development is just straight up. Some guys, they'll, they'll, they'll go up, they'll have a little bit of a problem for one year, and then they go up again. This could be a player that we look back years down the road and say, wow, the Islanders got a steal. And he proved everybody wrong. And he kind of has to come into camp with that idea. Because as a second round pick, it drives down the amount of money you can get on your first contract, right? So it means your likelihood of getting 925000 which is the the cap on on entry level deals, he's probably not going to hit that. And then you know your your signing bonuses or playing bonuses or anything like that, any kind of bonuses that you add into your ELC, he's probably not going to get that either. So you you have to kind of take that and say, all right, I'm I'm going to come in and prove people wrong. And the hockey IQ part is interesting to me too because I see a lot of that of hockey sense and hockey smarts. It's not just with Ratu, but with other players where they make decisions on the ice and the scout goes, now why did he do that? To me, that's some of that I think is coachable. I think you can you can coach them to play that play that game better, where you can sit them down and go, hey, so on that play you made a pass over to the left. You didn't see the guy on the other side of the ice, or you you didn't think that through. You didn't take a moment and and back off and and look at your options. You just tried to blast right through the middle. So the hockey IQ part, you might be able to coach it to where that improves. But it was in. And again, I've got all of these these draft books I was looking through for this, and they all kind of say the same thing, that some of his decision-making is something that you need to be, be concerned with. And then there's the question of his ceiling. So if you're drafting a guy in the first round, you want a guy who's ideally first two lines, right? You're looking for top two lines, top four defensemen, or starting goaltender. That's what you want. And there's a lot of guys in this draft this year who may very well be second liners, as their, their ceiling. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are some very good second line players in the NHL. When I see people saying, well, the best he can be is second line, my answer is, yeah, that's pretty good. 
uh, most NHL teams, their second line is is not too shabby. So unless we're going to make the argument that you just have one good line on every team, which would be false, uh, second liners aren't too bad. So is the is the high end for Ratu going to end up being second line or is it going to be third? Because a lot of the scouting reports I saw said third line ceiling or something along those lines. Or some scouts saying, I don't know that he plays in the NHL. And they say that due to the hockey sense parts, the not necessarily making great decisions on the ice, which during a preseason game can get you um, put right out of there. And or uh, the, the idea that his offense isn't trending up Maybe you don't see him as a bottom six guy and he's just not quite top six capable. So I, I totally understand why he fell. I'm surprised too that he fell as far as he did. But clearly there were a lot of teams that soured on his game. Uh, there were a lot of teams that had other guys ahead of him. It may have been that the other players they took, they felt were better skaters, that they had better uh, potential, or they just had better draft years. Their draft year was better. And so they passed him on the depth chart. So we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below regarding Ratu making this 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 nosedive from number one overall and con consensus two years ago, number one overall, and, and now being a second round pick. So is this going to be one of those players that we look back later and we say, wow, yeah, a lot of, a lot of hype and then it just didn't work out? Or did the Islanders make a really astute pick? Or might it be somewhere in the middle? Sure, why not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.